Jesus. And upon the name one more time. Jesus. Praise God to God be the glory. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Good morning, everyone. What a joy and honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord on another Lord's day. Amen. 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 It is good to see just about everyone who have made it possible to be here to worship the King of all kings. I want to apologize to those who are visiting with us and you were not recognized still waiting on the correct information because I'm getting names but um, two separate names so I'm not sure but I think I have learned that there's a Mr. and Mrs. Fabian Malou with Mr. and Mrs. Fabian or Warren or I can um, you folks just stand and let the church recognize and um, yeah, we have to have a, we have to have a, it's good having you on worshiping the Lord with us here at Venom. And God bless you, you are welcome. You may be seated. And um, we have a student boy with us, and uh, his wife was recognized. And when, I, when they said, um, Sister Boy, I almost said Sister Woman. I said that they that they were in the so you can understand that now. Uh, since the portraits of my people do tell you that I keep on calling them each other's name. But no problem, no disrespect. Good to have your brothers and sisters. Time is for a step. I want to ever remind the brothers, I don't know if you have received and digested that information, but fasting this week is your day. It's a national day of fasting in each local church for the life builders. So all the brothers, we know we don't normally see you in fasting. You'll be in charge on Wednesday. Somebody love the Lord. Yeah. Oh God, I think the woman that may be going in there and say, well, the brothers are going to be in charge. Or so the brothers are in charge for fasting Wednesday. It's a national day of prayer and fasting for the life builders in the New Testament Church of God. And uh, we ask as much of your brothers, those who can get the day off from your work, please do so. Those who are self-employed, tell those who you are working with, we have a day with God. Oh Lord, I'm in church. So we are coming here to continue to experience that which the Lord has been doing in our days in our weekly fasting. May I invite you to turn your Bibles to the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Philippines. I, a few weeks ago, started sharing on this particular subject matter. I have no intention of bringing it to a close, but obviously that will not be possible taking into consideration the time that we have left for this morning service. So Philippians chapter 3. I want to take us from verse 7 in the interest of time. If you find it, you need to stand and invite you to stand. Verse 7 of the text reads thus But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Ye doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, 
not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, Amen. the fellowship of his sufferings, be made conformable unto his death. And I want to stop at the verse 10. Thank you very much. The Lord has promised to add his blessing to the reading of his words wherever. Whenever they are ready, we say Amen. Amen. Father, we give you all the glory and the honor that's due to your great name. You are the great God, Jehovah. And beside you, there is no other God. None that is worthy to be worshipped. None that is worthy to be exalted. So we exalt you and we worship and glorify. We honor your great name because of who you are. We thank you, God, that you are here with us and you're here to bless us. For that is what you have promised us in your words. Lord, as I stand around the sacred podium to share your word, Lord, that which you laid in my heart with your people this morning, I pray, Spirit of God, that you will intervene and you will interrupt and you will take control, you will anoint, you will empower, and you will strengthen. Lord, I pray that as your word goes forth this morning, Lord, it will go with power and with clarity. Bless your word to our hearts that your name may be glorified in the people of God and say, Amen. Thank you, you may be seated. I shared with us a few weeks ago on the, the topic, the desire of knowing Jesus Christ. The desire of knowing Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself declared that the old I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. We also stated the last time that the need we have today is for a radical life changing experience. We also stated for the benefit of those who might not have been here for you to get a gist of the subject matter. So as we proceed, you have a better understanding. We also declare that before we can start to know Jesus Christ, we must first acknowledge that we really don't fully know him. Am I with the church now? Paul, it was who was tasked with the responsibility to represent Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. It was he who received power from Jesus. His power was to heal, preach, and to perform miracles. He was the one who was willing to deny himself and uh, to be weak, beaten, and stoned. Nevertheless, it is this same individual who bellowed out that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. My brothers and sisters, when we talk about having this desire to know Jesus Christ, what is it that we are really speaking about? I want us to know that very often in scriptures, the word know means 
not just being aware of something, but rather it is to have a personal experience of that which you are speaking of. Knowing Jesus, therefore, is not about getting something, it is about becoming someone. In chapter 1, verse 17, over let go of the features, Paul said, I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Is there praise in the house of the Lord? Ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to note that we can know a lot of information about Jesus Christ and is not experiencing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There is a difference, my brothers and sisters, about information uh, in relation to Jesus Christ and experiencing that personal, intimate, that close relationship with Him. The Greek word for no in Philippians 3 10, it carries the idea of intimacy. However, it's important for us to know, ladies and gentlemen, that sex usually has very little to do with intimacy. And intimacy is not always about sex. The breakdown of the world is into me sin. This is where the wife is into the husband or more than she is into herself. And likewise, the husband is into the wife more than he is into himself. It is not intimacy, ladies and gentlemen, unless both are doing something for each other. It is in like manner, therefore, with our relationship with Jesus Christ. For us to know Jesus, it requires intimacy. I want us to know that, that Jesus already done something for us. Not only that he has done something, but he continues to do something for us. Therefore, we must be willing to do something for him. He came both from the throne of Almighty God. Clothed himself with humanity. Oh, to call the sin of humanity. He who knew no sin became sin for us all. Oh, he bore our sin and Calvary. He was wicked and nailed to the whole rugged cross. He drank every last drop of human blood at the cross of Calvary. Oh, the blotted crown of thorn and vexed on his brow. Oh, are you with me, church of Almighty God? They pierced his side with sword and they drove those ten penny nails in his palm and in his feet. He cried out, he lied, he lied, let my Sabbath tonight, my God, my God, where have thou forsaken me? Boy, wait a little bit further, he cried, this finish Redemption is crying here. Oh, to talk to the truth of it. What he has done for us, ladies and gentlemen. He has paid the price. Oh, he paid the debt. He did not go. We owe a debt that we could not pay. Jesus paid it all. All to him and more. For sin that led a crimson stain. Jesus Christ. What is white? That soul is here in worship. Jesus Christ. Oh, the church to understand that there are many who want to know the power, but not many are willing to know the source of the power. The source of the power of 
the believer is Jesus Christ. We have power. You must know where your power comes from. You know, you must know where the source of your power is. So you want power, then invite you to get connected to the man Jesus Christ. And it's somebody for you, my friend, to know the power of his resurrection. You must first be an experience of his resurrection power. You must be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I want somebody to go. If he had not been risen from the dead, we would not have known about the resurrection. But because he rose from the dead, I mean somebody, that's why our salvation has become possible. Because he's no longer in the grave. That's why you and I have been redeemed. Can I talk to you a little longer? Resurrection experience is a stream when a dying process takes place. He could not have been rose from the dead, could not have been resurrected unless he had died. And if somebody Bible told us that he, when they went to check on him on the rest of the seas, when they got to the other two seas, oh, they broke their knees, but they are not tied. But when they got to Jesus Christ, they realized he was already dead, and they pierced his side. Oh, with their spear, the Bible tells us that all flow, blood and water, Signifying, according to biology, that death has taken place. I hear the Apostle Paul in writing to the Galatians, brethren, chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Almighty God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It is said to us that Jesus was crucified. I mean, somebody, so Paul said, it's not I that live anymore, but it is a crucified, the resurrected Christ. Yes! Ascended Christ, the lead that lives within me. That's why I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new person. All things are passed away, and all things have become new. For us to know Jesus Christ, there must be a willingness on our part to get rid of past experiences. Some of what we were taught, some of what we believed, and some of what we have seen lived by some who claim to have known Jesus. Oh, for us to know him. It is simple saying, my friends, uh, that some things uh, that we practice uh, in the name of religion, uh, some things uh, that we might have practiced in this year uh, in the name of Christianity, some behavioral practices, uh, and when we look at some uh, who have gone on ahead of us, uh, uh, some lifestyle uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we need to get past them. Uh, we need to see Jesus uh, for who we really is in all of his fullness. We need to see him as the Father saw him. Who oh, the Father saw him as his only begotten Son in whom he was well pleased. We need to see him as he presented himself to be. Many today that the Pharisees are missing out on who Jesus Christ is and really getting to know him because of the Conceived picture of who he is. You see, my friend, there are many who use a racial slur and racial ideology to label Jesus, and therefore they are miss the importance and the role that Jesus Christ has come to play. Many, because of religion, they have missed the significance of Jesus' birth. 
midst of the significance of his crucifixion, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. And above all, ladies and gentlemen, his second coming again. I mean, somebody, because of a preconceived picture of who he is. Although in Jesus' presence, as he performed miracles, he healed sick, he forgave sin, the Pharisees, instead of having their personal experience, they sought to criticize. You see, again, today, you might be in a moment, and instead of trying to get know Jesus, instead of joining it with the Apostle Paul, that I may know him, instead of creating this desire, this deep yearning, this hunger, am I with you somebody, as the Bible said, say that hunger and First, after righteousness, they shall be saved. And I talk to you somebody who oh, is your hunger and thirst. If you seek Jesus, he said, if you seek, you shall find. And if you knock, it shall be open. And if you ask, it shall be given. These are some basic formulas that we must employ if we are going to get to know Jesus Christ today. Many have come into his presence and could have had their sins and can have their sins, your sins, being forgiven, but have refused to seek forgiveness. Let me privilege to propose a question to you this morning, ladies and gentlemen. How have you defined Christ in your own mind? You severely limited who he is, or what he can do in and through you. Jesus did that perspective when he called the disciples. He asked the disciples, You are in talk, you move your among the people, you must be hearing all of opinions about me. What is it that the populace is saying? What is it that the town folks and the country folks are saying? What is it that they are saying about me? And Mr. Spokesman got up and everybody got up. Oh, some say you are Elias. Some say you are one of the prophets. Some say you are this. Some say you are that. Jesus said, okay, that's what the common man is saying. But you have been with me. You have seen all that which has transpired. What's your opinion? How do you perceive me? What is it that your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, and your spirit, what is it that is saying about me? Peter said, the Lord, the Christ, the Son of the living God, may I suggest to us this morning that it is time for us to have a fresh look at Jesus Christ. May be like the Apostle Paul cry out, I want to know Christ. The songwriter had such a desire. He said, more about Jesus. Let me know more of his saving grace. Amen, somebody. Is there anyone in the moment or under the reach of my voice this morning who is having that desire? to know more about Jesus. This I've been saved. I am going to church. I am being actively involved. I am preaching. I'm in some way. I'm administering. I am teaching. I am playing music. I'm talking to you. I sit on board. I sit on head of committee. What is that? Sufficient, or is there a desire? I want to move from the surface. There was a time when Jesus said, You may not launch out in the deep to know. 
Jesus, my friend, uh, doesn't move from shore. You see, when you're at the shore, everything from the deep come. All the dirt and everything uh, from deep come to shore. You need to get out in the deep. Uh, deeper, deeper, with the love of Jesus. Daily, let me go higher and higher in the school of wisdom. More for grace to know. Can I tell somebody this morning that there is much more to know about Jesus? It's not only knowing him as our Savior. It's not only knowing him that he went to Calvary, gave his life as a ransom for us. Is that only knowing him that today he sits? At the Father's right hand, has a way to say so. that he should burst the eastern skies one of these days. And he's coming back with his hand full of reward to pay every man according as the work should be. I would want us to know, my friends, we need to get deep in Jesus Christ. So the question might be asked, why do I need to know Christ? We need to know Christ because of who He is. In John's Gospel, Jesus has been presented to us as fully human and fully God. In spite of Jesus clothing Himself in humanity, He has never ceased to be the eternal God. Jesus is Creator. Jesus is Sustainer of all things. And he's the source of eternal life. In verse 1 of St. John 1, John said, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh, and the Word came and lived among us. I want us to know that to the Jews, this saint was blasphemous. To the Greeks, this saint was unthinkable. But to John, the word was the good news of the gospel of God the Father. He is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Of himself, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door by me, if any man enter. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the life. Who oh, said, I am the true vine. And in closing, he said, I am that I am. I'm in somebody. You still want to know more about who Jesus is. He is who oh, the firstborn, the virgin birth of Mary. I'm in the first boy of Mary. He is that which the devil tried to kill. He's a seed of Abraham that God spoke about. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Who is Jesus Christ? He's a fool man in the sight of the furnace. Can I come to the church and over there? Who is the one no more about Jesus Christ? Well, he is a man of God. Now take it away. The sins of the world. You still want to know a little bit more about Jesus Christ. He's the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. How many somebody? He is King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He is the conquering lion of Judah's tribe. He's the first and the last. He's the Alpha. He's the beginning. And he's the end. How many somebody? Throne him. Lord of Lords. He is the one who's here. Who moves the sea? Amen. He is the one who has the keys of death and hell. And then somebody, he's coming back again. And then he's a resurrector. And he's a life. He's a first. And he's a last. And I'm talking to you, Church of God. You want to know Jesus Christ uh, because of the work you have accomplished, and I better come on home. It's a more closing time in Romans chapter 5, 12 through 21. The apostle presents Christ. He presents Adam and he presents Christ as two representative figures 
whose actions determine the destiny of all those who belong to them. In verses 10 through 14, we find the work of Adam. And in verses 15 through 21, we find the work of Jesus Christ. The work of Adam brought forth death as in one man all died. As in one man sin came upon the earth and death passed on all man because one man had sinned. But because of Jesus Christ, who oh, he counteracted and he interrupted that which the first Adam did to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15 22, the word declares, For as in Adam all die. So also in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam brought sin and death and curse and pain and suffering up upon the earth. Can I talk to somebody a little bit? Every time you feel the pain in your head, curse Adam. Every time you suffer, curse Adam. Every time you can't find money to take care of the financial needs, curse old Adam. Is that brought suffering upon the face of the earth. When God created the world, he blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. He said, look at what you have. You have more than you can man, man, take care of. But he said, this belongs to me. I want the church to understand that what belongs to God must remain God. What belongs to God, we must leave it. It is sacred. It is holy. It is set apart. And it is for God. The moment we transfer, the moment we Come on that which belongs to God. The moment we start to covet what belongs to God, we are carrying a curse upon ourselves and upon our generation and generation and generation which is to come. That's what Adam did. He partook of that which belonged to God. And curse who came upon the earth. But Jesus Christ came and because of his coming, we will have life a life more abundant than Can I tell somebody something this morning? You don't have to continue to live in sin. You don't have to die and go to a devil's hell. It's because of the devil where hell exists. Am I talking to you? Hell was made for the devil and his angels. You don't have to go down here. For Jesus Christ came that we may have life and have life more abundant than Jesus is the life giver. Jesus is the life restorer. He is the emancipator. He is the liberator. He can break every set off and set off.